Hello everyone, this is Jeff Barton with Network Consulting Services. And today we are going to talk about installing and using the barcode scanner on an Android OS. And we're also going to show you the desktop version of barcode scanning within the Evanti Asset Manager application. Uh, today we will start with uh, talking about the VPN clients. If you are an on-premise customer and you need to have uh, and your app is not available outside to the internet, then you need to have a VPN client on the device that's going to be doing the scanning, the Palo Alto or Cisco or any of those. Um, just a couple of uh, choices that are out there. Check with your networking team to find out what you need to install in order to access the application. From there, uh, on your phone, you'll also need to install two applications. First one is the barcode keyboard. Um, you need to do a keyboard and not a barcode picture scanner. Uh, that way you can use it as an actual keyboard inside of applications. Uh, this one here is the one that we tested with, barcode NFC OCR scanner keyboard. That worked just fine for the purposes of what we were doing with it. Other than a couple glitches I'll show you later on with my phone. Um, I recommend testing with your phone to see which barcode keyboard works best. After you get the barcode keyboard installed, uh, the next thing you'll want to install is the Avanti application. Um, you can do a search for Avanti Service Manager or Avanti Asset Manager. The one you're looking for is the Avanti Asset Manager that has a little red icon and looks like barcodes. And you'll go ahead and install that version. And then after that's installed, You'll want to go out and open up the application. You'll want to go out and install, open the keyboard scanner application. When you open that app, uh, usually it will have uh, enable the settings so that you can turn the scanner on as a keyboard option in Android. And you go ahead and click yes, turn that on. And then you also need to change the input method keyboard on your keyboard system. I click switch input methods and uh, on the manage keyboard options if you're not using the software you just change it to the scanner keyboard and then you go ahead and finish up that'll close the keyboard app down and then you go open up the Avanti application in the Avanti application you will see the uh, tenant URL, if you are um, cloud-based, that's the full URL. You'll get an error if you don't put in the HTTPS. Um, or on-premise, you need to use the HTTP or HTTPS, whichever you're installed with. Make sure you use the full URL with the heat on the end. And then you should see your login prompt for your version of the application. Go ahead and log in. I'll do that real quick here on mine. Username, password. And I got the error message that I'm already logged in. I forgot to log out on my desktop. If you get that prompt, just go ahead and type in your username, uh, your password again, and hit try again. That will kick you out of any other sessions that you're in. That often occurs with admins as well, because admins are only allowed one concurrent connection. When you get logged in, you'll see all of the roles that you are assigned to. Uh, and in a list, you can scroll down and pick whatever you need to do. It's actually a fully functional version of the application. In mobile format, you can click on Asset Scanner today for the demo. And we go to the initial form, uh, and then we'll hit a new scan. The way the application is designed to work is you'll click on that. Um, first time that you do a scan, the depending on the version of the app, barcode app, you'll have to do a little bit of configuring with your scanner. So we'll click the scan barcode and it'll come up and it'll say, ah, I don't have permissions. So you need to go ahead and give the application permissions to access your scanner, your phone. You also need to give it storage. Usually that's just so that it can do a cache or whatever it needs to do to send that data over. Um, and then go ahead and finish that part up. And then you'll click back on it again. And it'll ask for one more little configuration item. You need to decide whether you're going to use advanced or regular. Just use the defaults is what I set on mine. 
for the demo today. And then third time's the charm. You click on it, you scan. After that, you won't ever have to go through those options again. You go ahead and just click in there and scan your barcode. And it will access your camera. Now, here's where I ran into a little bit of a glitch with my cell phone. My cell phone's camera is able had a hard time focusing on the small barcode on the bottom of the laptop. And it wasn't able to pick it up as a barcode. I was able to get it to focus, but it still did not pick it up as a valid barcode. So that's where the testing comes in. You'll need to test with your camera and your particular setup to see which application will work best to pick up the scans that you're needing to do. I also tried my flash and a couple other things. And then I went and found a bigger barcode to test for this video. Um, we'll go back to the app and I'll just hit that again. And we'll hit scan barcode. And here's a bigger barcode on a box that I had out here. And if you'll notice, as it comes into focus, the application picks up and decides which one do you want to scan. So you just touch the one you want to scan and it goes great from there. Uh, and then you go through and it will scan. And you can click in any of those fields and scan what a barcode because now you have the barcode scanner keyboard down at the bottom. You just click barcode down there at the very bottom on the input. And then for this demo in the tool, you will actually, if it doesn't find the serial number, or it doesn't find the barcode for the asset tag that you're scanning, it will come back and give you an error message that it's not there. Or uh, you'll also have to then fill out all the fields that are required for a new asset. We'll go ahead and do that on this version here. Fill out all the things that are required, status, the asset type, all of those things. Um, and then we'll hit save when we're all done. It's a computer, it's a laptop. We're just gonna save it as a laptop, even though it's a box. We scanned a barcode for. And when we hit save, that takes you out. Uh, and creates that asset record. And here on the desktop version, we'll log in and show you what that looks like in the desktop version. Again, I forgot to log out of my phone. Let me uh, just type my password in again, and we'll log in to the desktop and change to the asset scanner role. And from there, we'll go do a new scan on there, and my desktop scanner is plugged in the USB port. I just click the uh, scan, and I can get this one to scan the bottom of the laptop. Um, just hit that up here and get that and click my button so it'll show you what it does. And I have it set so that it hits enter after it scans. Um, there you go. It has input that asset tag. And I do a lookup. It's not in my system, so now I'll go tell it what kind of asset it is to a computer. And it's a laptop, and I'm going to give it a name. This is uh, NCSI laptop, and I'm going to use the code for it. I'll scan that on there on the end. Same thing with the serial number, because Dell uses their uh, service tag and, asset, and serial number is the same thing. I'll just scan those. Now, if you had a company asset tag, you'd use your company's asset tag instead of that for the asset tag. And then you go fill out the information that's required on the field. Follow, look for the stars. Status is the only other field. And we're just going to mark it assigned and hit save. And now if we go back to the list view, that should, should show you the ones that you've scanned in today. And there you have it. And that, folks, is the end of our demo for today. And I just wanted to thank you for watching our video. Have a great day.